Hello everyone, Professor Tolentino here. In this video, I'm going to help you understand and apply William Perry's scheme of college student intellectual development. William Perry was an educational psychologist at Harvard University who offered an account of post-adolescent cognitive development, thus extending Piaget's theory. Despite its limitations, Perry's scheme is a very useful tool for both students and teachers, mainly due to its ability to shed light on the process of acquiring knowledge in young adulthood. Although they are commonly referred to as Perry stages, Perry himself instead favored the notion of phases or positions much like Marsh's statuses rather than stages, along which college students move progressively in their journey toward becoming increasingly sophisticated thinkers and more active learners. Therefore, these are today's topics. So, which are these uh, uh, p positions that William Perry talks about? What are the four major ones? Although uh, in the expanded version of his theory, Perry uh, describes nine positions, these are generally grouped into four major categories. The most basic one is that of dualism, which, as the name implies, represents a very binary, black or white, true or false, good or bad view of the world. According to Perry, as students enter college, they tend to view knowledge as consisting mainly of facts to be imparted by authority figures, such as professors. Um, in other words, they believe that education consists of teachers revealing the truth or correct answers and that learning, therefore, consists mainly of note-taking, memorization and regurgitation of said correct answers. In this simplistic uh, worldview, if other perspectives are acknowledged, they are either usually ignored or simply deemed incorrect, right? In this very true or false, right or wrong, black or white view of the world. Um, students in dualism spend a great deal of time trying to figure out what the instructor wants and are generally very unsettled by requests, requests to think critically and autonomously. In other words, uh, according to Perry, this is an, inish, an initial phase of intellectual development that um, mainly freshman college students engage in as passive learners who hopefully will eventually progress towards uh, higher levels of cognitive development where they become more active learners and uh, critical thinkers. The next major position, therefore, is multiplicity. After experiencing some cognitive dissonance in the previous stage, students in multiplicity begin to accept multiple perspectives, but they overcompensate by assuming that knowledge is simply a matter of opinion to which everyone is entitled. Um, they realize that some problems aren't simply true or false or right or wrong. Um, and unlike dualists, they now view professors as guides at best and at worst as merely opinionated individuals who may be unable to provide the right answers. Students in multiplicity um, may provide subjective and unsubstantiated answers as well as often rebel against constructive criticism because for them, um, instructor feedback is essentially an opinion. Um, as students struggle to accommodate, right, in a very Piagetian uh, way of, of developing cognitively, so as they engage in accommodation, which can be a very difficult process, um, 
uh, of a combination of their shifting view of the world and of knowledge, they may turn to peers as a source of knowledge, um, which is a, a good thing in itself. So that is multiplicity. The final major position is relativism and its associated commitment. According to Perry, as students advance in their university studies and are exposed to different people, perspectives, and ideas, they um, begin to accept ambiguity or vagueness as a part of life. And, um, but despite this, they learn to weigh solutions to problems uh, based on facts and evidence. Um, so they learn to support their opinions with evidence. Students in relativism are able to think critically and to base their opinions on facts. They value the input of those with greater experience and knowledge, uh, while also realizing that knowledge is shaped by one's background, biases, assumptions, methods of inquiry. Um, therefore, in this particular position, in their journey of intellectual development, students um, always take context into account when assessing facts, which may be ambiguous. Finally, in the related position of commitment in relativism, students in their final college years uh, begin to synthesize their understanding of knowledge and thinking into a personal worldview outside of academia and start to make commitments to these ways of thinking. In other words, what used to constitute a mere academic exercise in critical and contextual thinking now becomes a way of life as students uh, and young adults integrate knowledge with personal experience. Now that you have an understanding of Perry's scheme of intellectual development, keep in mind some important points. Firstly, individuals may occupy uh, several positions simultaneously with respect to different subjects or life domains. For example, a student may find themselves in dualism in math or science class, whereas in psychology or philosophy, they may be at a more advanced phase of cognitive development, such as multiplicity or uh, relativism. This could also apply to a different life domain, such as religion or politics, where uh, an individual may find find themselves in, say, dualism, um, in politics uh, with a very true or false, uh, black or white, right or wrong type of thinking, uh, and even religion, right? My religion's right, yours is wrong, uh, my religion is true, the other's a false uh, type of thinking, um, and uh, in a different life domain may occupy a different position. So that's an important point to keep in mind. Um, also, to note, individuals may retreat back to a previous position. So uh, the movement is not always uh, progressive. It's not always uh, toward higher stages. For example, when students encounter the ambiguity or vagueness, right, or ambivalence of relativism, they may feel threatened and uncomfortable and therefore retreat back to uh, dualism um, or multiplicity. Another important point to keep in mind uh, are the research methods of uh, William Perry. Because Perry's initial research in the 1950s and 60s um, was based on a small and non-representative sample of college students, the scheme's applicability uh, may be limited in the modern-day diverse college student body. So that's a very important point to keep in mind. And we should always ask behind, uh, in regards to any theory or statement, what were the methods of inquiry, right? How did people arrive at these conclusions? What were their assumptions? What were their biases?
That's critical thinking. Nevertheless, despite the, these limitations and the above caveats, Perry's scheme remains a useful framework with which to think about one's own thinking. Metacognition, in other words. Um, Perry's scheme helps both students and teachers. On the one hand, it helps students identify their respective positions in the scheme and therefore to develop corresponding learning strategies. On the other hand, it helps professors to develop useful teaching strategies with which to help students move toward more advanced intellectual development positions. At this point, as usual, I would like you guys to pause the video and reflect for a moment. Does Perry's scheme resonate with you? and your own intellectual development? If so, where do you find yourself along the various positions in the scheme? Could you think of specific ways to modify your learning strategies in order to advance to higher intellectual positions? Finally, at the end of this lecture, you should be able to critically evaluate Perry scheme of intellectual development and apply it to your own intellectual trajectory. That's it, everyone. I'll catch you on the next lecture. Take care.